Hello, welcome to the pilot program in the Art in Arlington series. For those of you uh, in the Arlington, Massachusetts area who have been uh, watching the Women's Networking Breakfast series, you may recognize or recall seeing this episode. There was an interesting set of circumstances that led to me presenting it with a part of that series, but it actually belongs here with the Art in Arlington series because it was doing this set of interviews uh, at the Arlington Center for the Arts Open Studios in 2015 that led to me wanting to create this Art in Arlington series. And one of the artists in particular, Connie Chamberlain, is going to be the subject of an upcoming episode of the Art in Arlington series. And who knows, maybe I'll even get to talk with some of the other artists and have a longer conversation with them about their art. In any case, I hope you enjoy getting to meet these seven artists and seeing what they do. And as always, I thank you for watching. Uh, hi, my name is Jonathan Barbado and I'm an artist here today at the ACA event here in Arlington. Um, and so what I'm working on is video game dioramas. And I just really love to play video games and I love the art and the style that was really put into it. So instead of buying a t-shirt or maybe putting up a poster, I thought it'd be really fun to just kind of adapt the game to make some beautiful dioramas. And you can kind of see some work that I'm working on right here. So right now I'm finishing up a Legend of Zelda diorama. And what I do is kind of print off different layers to build the depth. And that's what's happening right here now, building up a layer. So please take a card. And there's a lot of great artists here today. So fun to meet new people. And I really love connecting with everybody. I feel like I'm learning a lot too. People have been coming up and asking me if I have seen this artist, gone to a certain event. Um, there's an origami event happening at MIT next month that I learned from another artist who came by and spoke to me. So it's really great to be here. So how long have you been doing this kind of art? Well, the paper art down here, I've been doing my whole life. I've always done this, and it's, it's fun to be able to share it and show people. These shapes are all actually made from the same piece of dry cleaning tag, so every single shape starts off as the same strip. Uh, and so the video game dioramas are relatively new. I started doing this about a year ago, actually, um, when I saw something similar online that a friend of mine now, Aiden, he's really great. Um, we made something similar, and so we've been going back and forth and we share each other's work. And then during the last year's snowstorm, I had a lot of supplies, and so most of these were made during the snowstorm last year. Uh, my name's Gary Hawley. I live here in Arlington. I've lived here for about 20 years now, and I've been doing uh, silversmithing and woodworking for about 30 years uh, and I uh, what I enjoy most about it is moving from medium to medium so I, I started out in wood and then I shifted to metal and then I went my family and I went and lived in Mexico for a while and in Mexico there isn't a distinction between woodworkers and metal workers and leather workers and jewelers it's, it's a much more fluid combination of medium. So when I got back, I started doing woodworking with gemstones and silver and bronze and that's what appeals to me is the variety of the different skills and the different combinations that I can create. So that's what's kept me going is, uh, is the variety and it never ends as to what there is to learn and new skills to pick up and different combinations to put together. So it's uh, now that I'm recently retired, it's been a really wonderful experience. And uh, it's one of those things where, and you, I think probably most people have this I get down into my shop and I start working, and three hours later, I think, oh, I, I just was here right through lunch and I thought it was an hour later and three or four hours have passed. And that's the part of the appeal is the, the concentration that it takes to work both with the wood and the metal. Is you have to really pay attention to what you're doing 
and you can't be thinking about something else. And that's that's wonderful for me. Sure. Ar Arlington's great. It's a wonderful community. We moved here um, mostly because I have uh, an adopted son and I wanted him to be in, a, in an excellent school system. But I also wanted him to be in a school system with a variety of different cultures and, and different kinds of families. And this is, and Arlington is just the most amazing place in terms of varieties of how you define a family. It's really heartwarming to see how my son has fit in with all the different children here. And I feel so comfortable being an older parent uh, in, in, again, in this variety. And uh, it's a wonderful place to be an artist or a craftsperson because there's a lot of support, a lot of interest. Uh, this place here, the Arlington Center for the Arts, for example, just a wonderful environment. And I do this craft show partly because I like to sell things, but also I, I love meeting the people of Arlington, and I love meeting the other people who do uh, painting and quilt work and pottery. It's just an amazing conglomerate of really interesting people here. It's been, it's been great. I've loved Arlington. This is one of my favorite pieces, and the reason I like it is because it combines all of the skills and the different kinds of media that I enjoy working with. There's the cherry and the maple are turned on the lathe. The metal work is done in my shop. The stones are set in my shop. And then it has this little tiny drawer in it that makes things just a little bit different. Um, and, and that's appealing to me, a sense of humor something that's unique and a little bit different. So it, it's really enjoyable to make something that reflects my values and my interests. Hi, I'm Jess Stateler. I'm an Arlington resident and I am an artist. I'm here at Arlington Open Studios this year and I am somebody who upcycles various things like uh, like Altoid boxes and makes them a more permanent and useful object, something beyond the use of its original purpose. Uh, some of my more fancy work that takes several weeks to make are things like these dragons. Uh, I use various tools to um, make very fine um, what I call vermicelli and uh, it takes a great deal of work. This is all polymer clay, Sculpey specifically. Uh, I mix the clay first and then run it through, of all things, a garlic press. <laughs> I don't use a garlic press in the kitchen, uh, it's not my kind of thing, but it sure works great for, for my art here. Um, I also use a, a pasta roller which makes these very, very fine, detailed, um, very uniform sheets of clay. It also helps uh, blend the clay very, very carefully and, and allows me to make this very uh, specific gradation. Uh, I'm somebody who really likes pop culture, so a lot of the work that I do is pop culture. Um, I have Sean the Sheep, I have John Green, The Fault in Our Stars, Minions, and Harry Potter is everywhere because it's just fun to do. Um, it's really wonderful to work at Arlington Open Studios. They've been very welcoming. Um, this is a wonderful space uh, that is like no other to be able to have all of these artists at one place. Um, so rain or shine, you get to come here and see what your neighbors make. So I ha heartily recommend that people come down anytime there's an open studio here in Arlington and check out what your neighbors make. Thanks. So one more thing I forgot to mention the first time. Uh, one of the things that we have this year are um, some woolen knit dryer balls. This is a knit outer core and then filled um, solidly with, um, with fluffy yarn, uh, wool. And my partner, Annie, who is a professional knitter, go visit her at Mind's Eye in Porter Square. Uh, she made these and together we spun, hand spun this wool together and uh, 
yeah, there's uh, there's just a, a just a lovely variety of of all made by us, all my all by my family. So, thank you. I'm Johnny Lapham, and I'm an artist in Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm uh, right now. I'm making sculpture in the shape of hands. I love to work with hands because they're the way that we make contact with the world, but they're also a very complex uh, sculptural form. It's very hard to uh, get everything right. There's a lot of moving parts, and the complexity is part probably what um, is exciting to me. Um, this is the first hand I made. I've been working with found materials, broken chairs, room handles, uh, sticks, wire, anything I can get my hands on. I like to use um, I like to use worn down things because it has a kind of lived in skin. So it has a, there's a way in which um, trying to preserve the skin of something. So it looks like maybe it grew this way, maybe it all it all uh, belongs together this way. This particular hand came from one chair that I found in the trash and uh, I noticed that the four legs were um, tapered in a certain way just like our fingers are tapered so I left them just the way that they are uh, without cutting any knuckles into them or making them bend but then I was looking at the rest of the pieces of the chair to try to find a thumb and I noticed that here on the back of the chair there was this perfect little dent here and the way the um, the way that the thumb kind of comes out of the hand and and has a similar um, uh, sort of sweeping angle to the thumb so um, the rest of it was just then trying to work out the carpentry to get it all to stick together um, carving some places out sticking in dowels uh, to make it strong enough to hold together This is um, one of the more complex pieces I've done. This piece actually took three months in the studio. It's, uh, it's made out of, um, I found in somebody's trash, I found a whole box full of, these are balusters from a banister. Someone had cut them all, they were all cut in half and just stuck in a box. And uh, they looked like bones to me. And they also had a lot of very detailed anatomy, so I just started thinking, um, what uh, what could I use these, um, you know, which part could be the finger, which part could be a thumb, how was I going to handle the palm? So uh, when I got it together, um, I, uh, you know, everything here on this hand is some part of that baluster. Uh, it's cut off the edge, it's cut off the center. Um, I had to kind of invent uh, carpentry to make some things uh, with a disc sander and a rotary arm saw, trying to get all these angles and get the tiny little pieces to fit together. Um, uh, some of it was very, just very complex, trying to get these two to come down and become one, um, just, just to get it all to, to work together. Um, I'm also really happy with the way the hand, instead of just, at first I was just going to have these just come down really straight, um, like a power, power line tower, but I, um, uh, in the end I realized I could make them flow a little bit more like the, the um, organic shape of our forearm. Um, right now I'm working with uh, tree branches and fallen twigs and things and again I'm trying to preserve the the bark as a skin um, and also just use the pre-existing kind of curves and bends of the wood to instead of cutting the wood and creating knuckles I can just use the, the bends in the wood to create kind of the, the organic forms of our hand. Um, here on this one is is an example just looking like the back of a hand, um, uh, just finding different shapes of twigs to, 
pull together and and create the sort of curve that's here in the back of our hand and uh, um, the natural flow as the fingers kind of pull together. What I love about being able to make these sculptures is at a certain point it really feels like they come alive. Um, it feels, it's kind of almost magical to me, uh, trying to uh, recreate reality in a way that it looked like it just grew that way. Um, what I love about making hands is that it, it's, you know, it's the way that we contact reality, it's the way we make connection with each other, it's the way we make contact with our world. And when I look at, you know, some raw materials, I'm just saying, what does this want to be? What, what wants to be the thumb and the fingers and the palm? the wrist, um, but especially how does it, how does it, um, what kind of shape does it want to take? What kind of gesture does it want to make? And I have a whole, uh, basically a garage full of found objects, uh, chairs and broom handles, hockey sticks, and fallen tree branches. And I can't wait to get to each little pile of it and see what it wants to become. What I love about being in Arlington is there's so many other artists here. We get to do the open studios together. The Arlington Center for the Arts has been an amazing, supportive organization. Uh, they, they run classes, but they also bring artists together. And um, uh, we really get to celebrate being artists here. Hi, I'm uh, Janice Hayes Cha, and uh, I'm an artist in Arlington, Massachusetts, and I do mixed media collage. I uh, use greeting cards as my medium or my material. Uh, I started making collages when I was sick. I had cancer a couple of times, and I had a whole bunch of get well cards that I wanted to use, and so I switched from painting to making collages that look like paintings, but are actually um, all little pieces of greeting cards. So there's writing and images, and sometimes I use photographs. So from a distance, my pieces look like paintings, but up close you can see that they're actually small, tiny pieces of lots of different memories and colors and images. And uh, I actually just moved back to Arlington after being away for five years. I was in Philadelphia for five years, and uh, I'm excited to be back in Arlington because it's such a vibrant um, community. There's so many artists here, and uh, there's such a dedication to celebrating art in our town. Um, so I think that's it. Hello! How was it? Yeah, I, I was fine. And you are? My name is Connie Chamberlain. Yeah. I'm an artist at the Arlington Center for the Arts. Yeah. I've been here for 12 years. And I love it here. And I paint and sculpt and work with fabric. This is my human chrysalis, made for a show at the Arlington Center for the Arts called Green. And people seem to enjoy it going in and morphing. You want to tell me more about what you do? What what kind of, what shall kind I give you a little tour? Yes, please. Let me begin with my good queen. Yeah, okay. This is my good queen. This is her terrain that she rules over. She's very thoughtful and kind and just. And in the mirror, you will see the oceans over which she reigns. You see the ocean? Ooh, see it. The gold? Here. <laughs> you see it? All I see is me. What? <laughs> All I see is me. What are you <laughs> oh, this, the, the gold. <laughs> you see the gold where my hand is? Oh, all right. That's the ocean. Okay, I get it. I get it. You now. get it. Yeah. And then there's the sun above her, with crystals, circling the sun. Wow. That's the good queen. Wow, that's intense.
That's intense. Oh. Yeah. And then this is my most recent piece. This is Ursula. She's a collage. She has maps, grocery store netting, ink, tissue paper, and lots of other kind of colored pencils. Nice. I've done paintings. This one's a abstract, a stylized version of a church. It's about my father. A lot of my stuff is related to family. As is this one, which is called the Yellow Bathtub. And it's a story about my mother and myself. So these are quilts that I've done about um, my mother's experience. Um, she grew up one of eight during um, the Second World War. She grew up in Nazi Germany. And she was um, taken advantage of in many ways, one of them being incest in her family. And when I learned the reality of that, I was unsure of what to do with that information to process it. And so I met a woman by luck who was part of a group of women that were making quilts about that very topic. The purpose of the group was to process their own emotions and then also try to talk about and think about um, how we can possibly tell future generations about what people have experienced in this way. And meeting with Michelle um, was very important for me and I did my first quilt, um, started it with her and then finished it and then felt I wanted to do a second one. And on the second one, the back is also important. It's all hand beaded and I've recently added some pieces of, of mirror to it. And then this is a painting I did of my mother and myself. It's from a photograph. And the letter that's written, the text that's on the painting is from a letter that my mother wrote me when she joined a cult. She joined a cult for 17 years um, and uh, wrote me a letter telling me why she was needing to leave the family. And so that began a long period of not knowing where she was. And then when she got out of the group, she told me about her experiences in Germany. And that's when I then made the quilts. So as I had said earlier, um, my mother went through a difficult life and needed to leave the family, which she did for 17 years. Came back after joining a group and needing, as she left the family, she came back and um, we reconnected, which was a big, reunion, um, and difficult, but good. Um, and then she was living in Georgia at the time, and I was living here in the Boston area, and I went down to visit her, um, and arrived with a very bad cold, a very bad flu, actually, and um, so she was very caring and said, let me um, draw you a bath, which she did, and she not only drew me a bath, but she put candles around the bathtub, and as I was in the tub, not having seen my mother for 17 years, she came into the bathroom and looked at me in the tub, and it was a very strange feeling to have my mother in there looking at me um, as I was sick and feverish in a tub. And the image stayed with me, and um, I did some sketches, and then this painting was the result of the whole experience. I, in the bathtub, my mother looking down on me, and in this painting, there are three um, versions of my mother. This is the one at the moment. This is a shadow version of my mother that was sort of who I grew up with, I think I would say, not knowing much about her. And then this little one here, this little fleck of blue as she's escaping her life, which was um, very difficult, but she was left by, abandoned by my father and without any education because she'd grown up in Nazi Germany and was not allowed to attend school. Um, she had to support three children and did so and got a master's and ended up getting, becoming an art therapist and was very important in the field locally in Buffalo, New York. So she has had an interesting life. I have expressed some of it through art. 
and I'm very glad to be here at Arlington Center for the Arts. It's a wonderful place. I feel very safe here. So this is my father, Stephen Rockwell Chamberlain, who was born in Connecticut and um, grew up wanting to become a minister, which he did in the 50s, United Church of Christ minister. Um, had a family, a woman from Germany named Ulrika, who he married. Had three children, I being the middle of the three. Um, and, but as time went on, um, my father uh, was, I'm sure he was always gay, and he um, decided that he could no longer live the life that being a minister in Connecticut um, demanded of him. So he broke out of that life and became, I think, he really suffered a lot from manic depression and was untreated. So this, this drawing, painting, really reflects the two sides of my father that I came to know. Half of the year he was quite depressed and um, as he was working in the church, this is an image describing that experience. And then he worked in, um, in, social, in service work, social service work as well. But then this is the side that I also came to know, which was a really cra pretty crazy on any level, um, outgoing. He ran for mayor of Buffalo, He was, which is where we grew up. Um, he was a crazy, crazy, frightening kind of guy for someone like me. Um, he dated only men. He uh, was very attracted to black men only. He was really running away from his life um, growing up in Connecticut, that early life of sort of upper, upper middle class. And um, then this is a, this is a, you call it a tombstone that I wrote for my father. Um, he died in 1989. He died of AIDS. He was one of the, um, the, men, the people that died at that point in the epidemic. Um, it was a very difficult experience. Um, there was so little known about that disease at that point, um, and it was a very frightening thing. So I was with him for the last couple of months of his life, and he was never treated for his mental illness, and so really to the bitter end, he was um, struggling. Well, he wasn't struggling. I was struggling <laughs> with um, him and his life and trying to make sense of who I was to him. But um, this experience of doing art has opened up a lot of doors to me and made me more at peace with with what I went through and and I think it's a it's been very helpful. Uh, I'm Mark Kriegsman and I've been living in Arlington about seven years. Uh, so I work mostly in light. Uh, so I make a lot of different objects and then light them from inside with different patterns and animations and representations of different things that I see in the world. I build it out of light. Uh, so I come from a, a computer software background and there's a lot of beauty inside the computers but you really need to be another computer programmer in order to see it. And I was inspired to find some way of showing the beauty that's inside the machines uh, to the outside world. And working in, in this kind of program light is part of how I think I can do that. Uh, so I've been doing this kind of work about four years. Uh, so I do mostly independent work in Arlington, and this is my first time at Arlington Open Studios. Uh, but it's been a great community. People have been very helpful and very friendly and give me a lot of tips. Uh, the ACA is a, a great resource for everybody. I love the Arlington Open Studios experience.